We've got a really beautiful day today here in late January. It's also incredibly cold, very, very sunny. And there seems to be a neat pattern that sometimes the absolute coldest that it gets in our winter climate is associated with really clear skies. And so a couple things that are going on. I'm doing a lot of experiments today with solar and heating, uh, heating with direct solar, which I wanna get into and explore. Uh, but first, what I wanna do is take a quick note uh, look at something that is not working very well, which is our compost heating system for the greenhouse attached to our house. So let me get into that first. If that's new to you, feel free to check out the video linked here where I talk about setting this system up. This was a couple of weeks ago now, and it started out quite well. A very rough overview is this is a compost pile of bedding from our chicken yard with a 150 or so feet of PEX tubing half inch pecs run in a circuit in a loop going to a water tank inside of our greenhouse here that also is attached to a loop that goes through the bed and there's a pump that was circulating the water through and for the first week or so it worked actually very nicely there was water coming out uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 even 30 degrees hotter than the air uh, or the the soil in that space there's a couple reasons though why i think it failed and i'd like to go over all of those and get your input too. The first issue is even though this pile is bigger than it was in the past, I ran out of time and bandwidth to uh, insulate it as well as I should have. What I really needed to do was either put in some sort of fencing or retaining material on the outside and pack on the outside of this a thick layer of loose dry leaves, loose flaked hay, sawdust, something dry, insulative, carbon rich all the way around. I know I could have done, you know, foam board insulation or bubble material, but I really don't like using that kind of material next to hot composting systems. I did put a cap of a bunch of layers of burlap sacks to keep the, um, the moisture in on the top, and then over that there's plastic to keep the total moisture, uh, but I don't think that was enough to insulate it as well as it could have. So there was a thermal loss there. Let's look on the inside. So a few things went wrong in here as well. A few things went right but not right enough, let's say it that way. Uh, first thing was that this water tank, I did not insulate well enough right out of the gate. I did put a lid on top with a few burlap sacks. At first it was just one or two, and Stanley really enjoyed on a sunny day sitting on that, so there was a benefit and a yield there. But I did not insulate well enough between the container and the glass. Really, that should have been entirely insulated, so there was no thermal losses to the outside why heat in that direction? And I think if I had insulated the cap better, it would have allowed more heat to stay inside. Uh, but for a little while, we were getting almost 50 degree water coming out of the exit tube, and it was leaving at about 35 degrees or so down there. So there's a definite a thermal difference happening in that circuit. Even with the PEX running through this bed, uh, there was heat being delivered to the soil and still enough to come into the container warm. So it was good for a bit, but I think the lack of insulation in this to hold on to that thermal mass and the lack of insulation on the outside of the compost, uh, we just went colder and colder and colder than I'd expected. And it just kind of collapsed on itself as far as being able to keep up that thermal energy, mainly due to the lack of, of storage or retention of the heat in the system. I also think that with this bed, uh, there's a real benefit to, well, the PEC circuit is, I think, a nice layer in there, and we will revisit that in the spring to warm up that top layer of soil. These three tubes, perforated tubes, go down and underneath the bed. You may know this from past videos. They go to the other side. And what my thought was is I wanted to design that from the outset to hold the option of being able to force warm air down into the bottom of the bed when we get further into spring and there's lots of heat accumulating up high to use a fan to send that down, store the heat energy in the bed um, and have that be a, another thermal battery. But in the winter, because I did not cap those tubes, that was a space for more cold air, desiccating um, cold air to sneak under this block of soil, which did not help it conserve the heat. So a lot of little thermal losses and then beyond that, this is the biggest issue, is that simply 
I just never have made the time to really dial in. There's just so many little gaps here or there. Um, so it failed in a bunch of different ways, but I think the concept is sound and that if things were actually optimized, it would have worked quite nicely. If this tank was way better insulated, maybe insulated underneath so it didn't lose heat to the ground, insulated between areas where we don't need any heat, which is that window, and then on top so it's all capped in there, I think if the tubes were actually insulated in a thorough way or buried a bit, you know, this could have all been wrapped in burlap or loose hay. Um, and then to really spend the time to button up all of these random gaps because they truly add up. Uh, I think this is going to be a good system. I need to wait for things to thaw out before we get into that again, but I've got a lot of food for thought to improve that next time. And you can see the two little solar panels out there and I'll talk a bit about that for now that'll transition to the other part of this video where i've set up those two panels they're run in series to feed some voltage into this little victron um, solar controller and this is a battery so this is the experiment moving in the direction of understanding how to work with waste stream elements i went to a local auto repair shop and asked them if i could buy a used battery this was 20 bucks still in really good shape and so we have the start, the makings of the infrastructure to be able to use solar energy to collect and store it in a battery and use that to run our pump system. And so I really want to move towards that so that this can be implemented elsewhere where it's not directly grid tied. But then we get to the next level of this, which is using a little more solar energy to input heat directly into this system. So let's talk about that. I want to be really clear that I'm still very soundly in the realm of novice, so if you hear me use language with this that is not correct, feel free to correct me and just be aware that I'm just sharing notes as I get up to speed with this. So hopefully there's some fruitful start to a conversation and I'm always interested in getting some input from folks. So this is the start of a very rough sketch of a concept that I've had for a bit and I found some uh, channels on YouTube where people are talking about this. There's one in particular, David Paz, D-A-V-I-D-P-O-Z, who goes into the idea of using direct solar power, so photovoltaics, uh, with electrical loads, so DC loads, to power um, inexpensive AC water heating units. And so this is a solar panel our friend Juan found. This was getting ripped off of some buildings uh, near Cornell or at Cornell University. This was going to go directly into the dump and they were able, to, uh, Juan and some friends were able to salvage 10 of these panels. These are 325 watt panels. They were absolutely ready to go into a landfill. So these we were able to get for zero dollars. And so it's a really great platform to start this experiment. This is a 325 watt panel, so decently strong, um, but really beat up. You can see that's those are the specs if you want to pause, if you're interested in that. And I just simply took the wire, the MC4 connectors coming off the back and converted it over to Anderson Power Pole, because that's an easier platform for us to work with, and used some scrap wire that we got from the reuse store. So we're now we're in, I don't know, three bucks so far. And this is a $7 AC water heating element. And right now the air temperature is around four degrees Fahrenheit, five degrees. And this, seven or eight dollars after taxes item, is able to melt ice. It's quite, quite hot. You can hear from that. And that is with a single panel that was on its way to the dump. We now have this way on a sunny, ice cold day in the winter to extract heat. Uh, or send heat to a remote location. So this wiring we can get very inexpensive lengths of. And so the idea is, what does it look like to take this um, sun absorbing element, the pa uh, panel there, our garden is a frozen tundra for the rest of the winter. We have all of this light coming into the garden that is not being used by the, the solar panels that are plants. And so can we set out these dumpstered solar panels, run them in series or figure out some sort of wired configuration and take that wiring, send it back over to this structure to heat that water directly. So we've got compost heating as well as water heating 
uh, or solar heating that container. If we can have that work out to have thermostats turn it off at appropriate times, we can figure out ways to make it watertight and buoyant, have a fuse, so basically address any safety concerns that might be there. If that really works, then this might be a solution in the winter months of setting up solar panels and using these to actually heat our domestic water. Uh, so this is a sub $10 experiment that right now is really, really promising. It got hot enough to actually hurt the element a little bit. I think it needs to be submerged in water when it's energized. Um, but very, very simple wiring and a huge amount of really focusable heat for water. And if the container's actually very well insulated and has a circulator pump that's also solar powered to move that heat, then any day that it's sunny but cold, the water can be getting heated and be moved through garden beds and through other areas. This is a lot of intense heat for less than $10 and being able to salvage some uh, solar panels that would otherwise be in the dump. Yeah, it's reading about 95. Oh, there we go, 195 Fahrenheit and 90 centigrade. That's just with direct power from the sun. Pretty potent amount of energy to work with. I'd love to hear some feedback from folks on this. Do you have other resources that I should know about or that collectively we could uh, all get some value in knowing about? And what does it look like to uh, evolve and deepen the system in a way that is safe and reasonable? Do you see any real glaring issues I should know about? Um, I, I realize I just don't see much examples, especially on YouTube, of taking um, waste stream solar panels. And I feel like there's just going to be more and more of that as time goes on, you know, partially damaged by hail or being replaced because they've been in service for 15 or 20 years. If you can get them for free or for, you know, 10 cents a watt or 5 cents a watt or something, it seems like these could be some amazing experiments. These same panels deployed in the garden during the winter months to heat water could then also be deployed uh, near gardens in the summer months to run aerators and water pumping systems to move water through a landscape without any uh, charge controllers or batteries too. So I think there's some fruitful explorations here. I'd like to know what you're seeing that feels like, whoop, you really need to be aware of this or that before you move forward. And if you've got questions about what we're trying to do with this, let me know. And we'll keep experimenting and sharing notes and look forward to seeing how to revisit this whole compost heating system with this additional layer, this backup layer of a sun heating system using these deprecated panels and really inexpensive, ubiquitous AC water heating elements. All right, thanks for watching.